to believe that the Lord is leading us into a season of prayer. And I've selected a text that I really believe has the ability to produce faith in us and to call us back to that place of prayer. And so we're going to be in the 15th chapter of Matthew. And if you've got your Bible, you can turn over there. Matthew chapter 15, beginning in verse 21. And I'm going to read through verse 28. So the Bible does not read like a dictionary. For instance, if we want to understand what faith is, the Bible puts forward different individuals and we have biographical sketches such as the life of Abraham that model to us what faith is. This morning we have an incredible woman who shows us what it is to have biblical faith. And I hope this text encourages and challenges us and that we receive something from this and we're transformed this morning. So as we begin in verse 21, and Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from there, that region, came out and was crying Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. There are several things that are supposed to catch the reader right off the bat. Number one, this woman has every disadvantage you can possibly imagine. She is from a place that is associated with wickedness in the Scriptures. It would be like she... Uh, came from Sin City. It's the most unlikely place. She's of the wrong nationality. She is a woman, and so she is the most unlikely suspect to be a model of faith. I want us to look here once more at uh, verse 21. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. I want us to see here that there is a correlation between faith and the knowledge of God. This woman most likely had heard of the fame of of Jesus, and this conceived in her saving faith. She believed in the kind heart of the Savior, His willingness, and she also understood His unsurpassed authority, that He had the ability to do the thing for which she was asking Him to do. So there's a lot of people that simply don't pray because they don't know God. They don't understand his character, that he is willing and that he is able. Faith acts progressively within our life. The more we know who God is, the more we see spiritually, the more we are drawn to ask of him, the more we want him. Someone who has come into riches doesn't easily Uh, go back into poverty because they have 
tasted of something that is better, a better way of life in the, in the spiritual sense. Those who know more of God uh, cannot turn back to live uh, in spiritual rags. And so this woman refuses to be content to live without the glory of God. Like Jacob, she wrestles with God until he blesses her. She has a similar uh, desperation that we see in Rachel, who said to Jacob, give me children or I die. John Knox, the famous uh, reformer, uh, prayed to God. He said, give me Scotland or I die. There was a holy determination within this woman. She had to have the thing for which she brought before the Lord, and nothing was going to get in her way. There has to be a breaking point where we're no longer satisfied to suffer needlessly. And like the prodigal son, there has to be this light bulb moment. Faith has to be born to where we say, I can arise and I can go to my father's house because in his house there is ample provision. And so this is what has happened in her life, and it drives her to come to Jesus. She cries out, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. I want you to see here the inability of this woman. This is so instructive to us. Brothers and sisters, there are things in this life that we cannot do. In fact, according to Scripture, there is nothing that we can do in the kingdom of God to bring about the glory of God. We have a severe uh, weakness. The same almighty power that saved us must sustain us at every moment or we are lost. We are desperate for the power of God. We can't cast out demons in our own strength. We can't raise the dead and we cannot add to the church. We cannot change the course of a river. We cannot push back the ever-increasing um, evil of our generation. We simply do not have the power. And so this realization of weakness drives us to God. This is the beginning of learning the art of prayer. I want you to also see that there is a crisis here. Her daughter is possessed by a demon. And so she is confronted by this crisis. Faith comes to life in the throes of a catastrophe. It is fueled by a deep, heartfelt burden. She's not lacking in compassion or love. There is absolutely nothing that this mother would not do for her daughter. She has love and compassion. And if we're going to be men and women of prayer, we're going to have to lower the walls of apathy in order that we may feel a burden for the things of God. You cannot remain unmoved in this awful hour of need. You're going to have to let the Lord re revive your heart um, his heart, his burden, the Lord is going to have to share his heart with us, his heart for a perishing and lost world. I think of heroes such as Nehemiah, who was a man who was burdened. His uh, desire for the glory of God and for the city of God constrained and focused the entire course of his life. The spiritual condition of our community, the state of your own soul, the state of the lost, lost, what is it to you? Does it move you? 
Does it drive you to God? E.M. Bounds was a prolific author um, who is best known for his classics on prayer. This great godly giant of the faith was known to arise at 4 a.m. in the morning and he could be heard weeping over the lost. Such was his burden for the deep things of God. There must be a transition from indifference to ardent love if prayer is to be effectual, if we are to understand the art here of this woman's success before the Lord. Now, I want us in verse 23 to notice the response of Jesus. And this represents the first of four trials to this woman's faith. In verse 23, we read these words, But he, that is Jesus, did not answer her a word. She came to him in the right way, yet there was no answer. At this point, church, I believe that it is fair to say that uh, nearly 99% of people give up and walk away when heaven is silent to our petitions. How many prayers have died just at this place? How much grace and untold spiritual riches have been shut up in heaven when the saints walk away because it seems as though the Lord is ignoring our prayers. It feels like God is not listening when He delays to answer our petitions. Some people are stuck here for years. And some prayers never make it past this point. Because faith has been wounded in the silence of heaven, many have turned back from the petition that they had brought before the Lord because they are discouraged that Jesus seemingly ignores them. Friend, we have endless encouragements in Scripture to pray to pursue God. We know that if we ask, there will be a response. That if we seek, that if we knock, we have a gracious God in heaven who wants to open the floodgates of heaven. But I think the point this morning that is placed before us is that without faith, it is impossible to please him. I want you to understand that this woman's faith is rock solid. It is a firm foundation against all the many assaults of unbelief. If we are going to uh, obtain the promises of God, we are going to have to grow in this type of faith that is determined and is unwilling to give up uh, when unbelief comes to surround us in every way. It was said of Abraham, in hope, he believed against hope. And the idea there is, it is an impossible thing to trust in God to do the miraculous. We are called to believe crazy things. It is so difficult. Our faith comes under attack, and it must be strong. It must be rooted in the Word of God. It must be willing to stand against the waves and the assaults of Satan. It is a crazy thing to believe that God can plant a choice vineyard or garden in the midst of a desert. It is a wild thing to believe that God can quicken a nation. But this is what faith is. It believes the miraculous. It believes the impossible against all hope. This is the type of faith that this woman had. Look at this second trial that is brought before this woman. Look at the response of the disciples. 
And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. At this point, those who are remaining, their pride is wounded, and they walk away. This is uh, such an, an insult uh, that if she were to overhear these words of these uh, men saying, send her away, this represents the misunderstanding of men. Uh, the more spiritual you become, the more the world thinks that you are going crazy. They didn't understand Noah because he was a spiritual man and he saw the rain that was coming uh, he saw the judgment that was coming on the world, and everybody else thought he was uh, wild and out of his mind because of his faith that allowed him to see what God was doing. Here is a woman with Abraham-like faith standing right in front of the disciples, and they are asking that she be sent away. The problem for the spiritual man is that he sees things that the worldly man does not see. If the worldly man saw what the spiritual man saw, he would behave similar. Sometimes the spiritual have a burden that cannot be satisfied. They're not able to lighten up, eat, drink, and be merry, but they must continue to pursue God until uh, he uh, gives them uh, the request that is brought before them. Now look at verse 24. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, uh, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. I want us to focus on these amazing words from Jesus who he allows these things to transpire. And while the disciples can't see uh, this mighty woman of God who is before them, uh, Jesus takes interest in her and he gives her this incredible praise, a woman, great is your faith. We are to seek the approval of God over the approval of men. This insignificant outcast has the eye of Almighty God. Did you know, church, that there are things that God pays attention to and there are things that He is disinterested in? What an awesome thing it is when God takes an interest in, uh, in man. So the Bible depicts the Lord in search of individuals holding rare qualities. It would be like a merchant who is in search of rare, costly jewels in the same way uh, the Lord is searching for those that fear Him. Uh, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless towards him. You have done foolishly in this, for from now on you will have wars. The sense there is that God is searching, the all-seeing God, and he is looking for those who have choice virtues, for those such as this Canaanite woman who have faith. You might ask this morning, why was this woman put in this situation? Why did she have to go through these four different trials where it seemed as though that Jesus and the disciples were discouraging her? I want you to consider that trials 
provide a stage for our faith to be demonstrated. We are in many ways like spectacles in this world. All eyes are upon the godly. You have the ungodly who are looking upon us. There are those who do not want you to succeed in the faith. They want you to fall that they might rejoice over you. There are godly people that depend on you. They are earnestly desiring for God to work in your life. In fact, there are angels that look upon us. They look upon this church and they are watching with intense wonder as we like athletes in an arena, as we perform and they want us to succeed and there are demons and all kinds of forces of of hell that are watching us and they want us, our faith to die and they want us to fall. And most importantly, this text teaches us that Almighty God is looking, that He is looking down, that He is watching, that He sees your faith. What an awesome truth that is, church, that God can see the faith of the Main Street Church of Christ, that He can see your faith and my faith And he can take pleasure in that thing. This is a wonderful truth. I cannot stress to you this morning how exceptional this woman is. She is a child of Abraham in the spirit. Like Jesus' words in Luke, uh, where he says, When the Son of Man comes, will he find Faith. It is so rare to find someone who is determined, that continues to pray and intercede and is an overcomer. And there is literally nothing that the world can throw at their faith that they're not able to conquer in, in the name of Jesus. Uh, this is a rare Faith, And it's like the faith of the centurion that Jesus exclaims that in all of Israel, I have not found anyone with such great faith, someone who understands the authority and power of God. This woman is exalted above those in her generation and those to come after her. And we want to to see these qualities this morning. We want to understand how amazing this woman is, to understand that this story is written for our benefit. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so this woman had heard the glad tidings of the Messiah, of the Son of God, and she believed, and her faith was born, and this drove her to act in faith and to pursue uh, the miraculous from the Son of God. This morning, as we sit here under this amazing divine text, as we hear these words, perhaps there have been Uh, petitions. Perhaps there have been many things, burdens. You have a crisis. You have a, a hunger, a thirst. You have a need. You're broken. You are convicted. You are sorrowful for the ruined uh, spiritual condition of, of your country, but you've been discouraged. Your faith has taken a wound. It feels as though the Lord is not hearing. It feels as though you're unworthy. As we hear the word of God this morning, in a spiritual way, faith can be imparted. Life can be poured into your soul. God can call you back to this place of prayer. He can give you the strength that was in this woman. He can can give you uh, this ability to be a prayer warrior, to pray for your family, that God would do great things, to pray for this community that we and our helplessness, in our weakness, could do 
the unsearchable and the impossible, and these things come by prayer. I want to leave you with a very uh, encouraging story. I mentioned Ian e. Bounds, uh, the great prayer uh, writer. He ter- tells a story about a professor up in New York uh, many years ago. He was a circuit uh, riding preacher, which meant he would preach at multiple uh, small congregations. He was laboring intensely to be the most faithful minister he could possibly uh, be, visiting the sick, preaching his heart out. And he noticed that the congregation had not had a move of of the Spirit in many years. There had not been revival. It just seemed as though things were stagnant. And so this burden began to weigh upon his soul, and it led him to devote a night to prayer. And so he prayed all throughout the night, just crying out to God in his weakness. He received confirmation uh, within his soul early in the morning that God had heard his prayer. He got about two hours of sleep, got out, and and went about his ministerial duties. And uh, as the day went on, he was more and more encouraged And that evening, there was a service that had been scheduled, and it began to rain, and so the janitor thought that they're probably not going to have service. Uh, But the minister went, and he rang the bell anyway. Three young men showed up, and this minister, under the power of God, with great encouragement, preached his heart out with authority. Two of these men were deeply arrested Uh, under conviction, and their lives were changed. And one of these men went around and and was sharing all the great things that God had done for him um, in that service, and people began to flock to the church. And over the course of time, uh, hundreds were brought to the Lord, and the, the congregation was tripled in size. The lesson there, church, and what this this man uh, would say is that God blesses in correlation to, to prayer. He does not bless those that do not pray, but he blesses those that pray. Church, I just, um, God is at work here in this body. And he wants us to learn this all-important lesson that it's not about us. It's not about personalities. It's not about the flesh. It's not about money, but it's all about the power of God. God's grace is unleashed. Heaven is open, and faith is the key that opens heaven. He is calling us to be a people of prayer, and I hope that he would refresh you. I hope that you'll welcome the special people that have come to join us, that God himself has sent the prayer warriors, and I rejoice in that. I hope that you will join uh, someone else within this, this church to covenant in prayer. Find a prayer partner. Come ask me, and God is going to continue to do awesome God-sized things in response to those who continue in prayer. This is such a difficult thing. This woman is a superhero in the faith, and we must encourage one another in this this activity of importunity, of wrestling, of continuing to cry out for God's grace and His life within our uh, community. Also this morning, uh, perhaps, Uh, You would like to place your faith in Jesus Christ. You would like to believe on Him. The good news is that Jesus came to this world. He died for you and me for our sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day, and He has commanded that we repent of our sins, that we turn to Him, that we respond to Him in baptism, where we are immersed in water, reenacting the death, burial, and resurrection. We receive the forgiveness of sins. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If that is your desire, I hope that you will come forward this morning. If there are any other prayers of the church, won't you come forward as we stand and sing our song of invitation?